OK, I think um, we'll get started then. So uh, welcome. Um, so in terms of the running order for this morning, uh, first of all, I'm Mark Frost from Modernity Systems and I'll be your host this morning. I'll be doing a quick overview of Modernity and setting the scene for today. And then I'll hand over to my colleague, Tom Abuthnet, um, our Principal Solutions Architect and Microsoft Cert Certified Master. He will be talking to you about how you can use Microsoft Teams and also the wider Microsoft 365 to bring frontline and knowledge workers together. Then we'll hear from Megan Watkins on the latest views and offers from Microsoft. And then Jamie Wilden, our Principal Solution Solutions Architect, will be talking about secure collaboration in Teams and Office 365 with a focus on frontline workers. And then we'll have some time at the end for questions and answers if you have any. But feel free to post questions in the uh, in the window, chat window, um, and we'll pick those up at the end. OK, so in terms of an introduction to modality, for those of you who don't know us, we've been around for about 14 years. Um, we're known as a Microsoft UC specialist and have been helping customers on that journey through uh, LCS, OCS, uh, Link, Skype for Business and, and more recently Teams. So we're a Microsoft Gold Partner. Um, we're Fast Track Ready Partner as well. So if you have any entitlements under that scheme, then we can help you. We're a CSP, so um, we can help you with licensing as well. And we're also on the Microsoft TAP program, so we get early sight of the, the Microsoft roadmap. So we're the leading UK partner for Microsoft Partner for Teams, and we've helped over 1 million Teams users get online. Um, and we're very proud of the fact that we're the first partner in the world to attain the three advanced specialisations in Teams. So that's adoption and change management, meetings and meeting rooms, and calling. But we're not just about Teams. We offer services in the wider Microsoft 365 and Azure stack. And those services fall into three main categories. So that's professional services, where we can help you wherever you are in your journey with strategic planning uh, or actual deployment design and planning activities, as well as managing an actual deployment for you. And under managed services, we offer a range of different services from support and incident management through service delivery and also video contact center, call recording and direct routing managed services. All designed to optimize your Microsoft experience and help you get the most out of your investment. And the third category of services that we offer is around software. So through our own in-house team, we've developed a range of software products including Teamwork Analytics, which is a suite of Teams enhanced reporting uh, products to help you with adoption, governance and performance. We've also developed a range of meeting experience software products to help optimise the Teams meeting experience. And we've also de developed a virtual consultation piece of software called One, One Consultation which as you can imagine at the moment is extremely popular during the pandemic. We work very closely with third parties um, to integrate their products into the Microsoft uh, product stack. And some of those are listed there on the right hand side. So enough about us. Let's talk about frontline workers. So the first question is why, why are we talking about frontline workers? Why are they so important? Well, they're, they're the guys that are delivering on your business objectives, your business plan. Uh, you, you know this already, they're the backbone of your business and your business really depends on their success. In a recent Forrester report, it was discovered that in reality, less than 25% of frontline workers actually have the right tools to do their job. They also discovered that 60% actually find it really difficult to work with the rest of the business and 50% don't have access to the right information they need to do their job either. 
All of this basically leads to the frontline workers feeling disconnected and disengaged from the rest of the business, which is which is not good. And add to that the increased security risk if their devices aren't secured properly, then you have a problem. So at this point, I shall hand over to my colleague Tom, who will tell you more about how you can use Microsoft Teams to bring frontline workers and knowledge workers together. Tom, over to you. Thanks, Mark. I'll request control as well. So Mark's outlined well there why frontline workers are so important to your business. Uh, let's just get down to that a little bit more detail and talk about why you would even want to digitally enable frontline workers. Uh, traditionally, the knowledge workers have been well catered for, and we've, we've seen this in the pandemic, like things like SharePoint and everything in the cloud and Teams all work really, really well for knowledge workers at desktops. Uh, we can't see the slides, Mark, thanks. Um, but knowledge workers traditionally less well catered for mobile experiences haven't been as good. They've often been neglected. They haven't had the access to the tools. So there's a bit of a divide between all the tools and abilities knowledge workers had and what the frontline workers had. Often frontline workers are bringing their own devices. So there's a lot of conversation about security, ISO, GDPR compliance. And Jamie will get into that in more detail in the security section. But it's been a real challenge to deal with bring your own devices. Often um, we hear this time and time again. Frontline workers are left to use less secure platforms, less compliant platforms to get their job done. So they'll gravitate to iMessage or WhatsApp or a Facebook or anything else they can use to get their job done. And they're not meaning to be non-compliant. They're just trying to get their job done with tools that actually work in a mobile experience. Uh, lots of organizations want to bridge the divide as well between their, their back office that have lots of knowledge and lots of tools and their frontline workers who are actually in the field, engaging directly with customers, often the face of the business, um, but need to talk to the, the back office or the knowledge workers as well. So what can Microsoft bring to the table? Well, in the last few years, we've seen a, a massive improvement in the mobile experience on Microsoft 365. So if you went back a few years, it, it was arguable that could Microsoft deliver a great experience on Android, a great experience on, on iOS, on iPads, um, but now they definitely can. So great mobile clients for all the experiences, things like Teams and Yammer uh, and SharePoint all work fantastically on, on mobile devices. You can increase communication, collaboration and productivity, both between frontline workers and back office or knowledge workers, but also between frontline workers within their organization. So maybe in, in retail, it's different stores communicating more directly, frontline worker to frontline worker in manufacturing or uh, construction. Maybe it's different sites actually being able to talk and have visibility with each other. So some examples of specific use cases. Uh, Viva has obviously been a big announcement in the last couple of months. So Viva Topics allows you to pull that knowledge out of your organization and surface it for frontline workers. You can use tools like Power Automate to create business process flows and automation systems. And I'll give you some examples of that in a second. Onboarding, always a challenge for frontline workers. In lots of frontline scenarios, the turnover is higher as well. So onboarding people with the proper training, with the knowledge, with the insights. You've got things like Teams, Viva Learning and Stream. Uh, obviously, particularly in pandemic times, monitoring health and well-being has become a real concern, particularly for frontline workers. While the knowledge workers are you know, able to work from home and carry on, lots of people are in the field. Uh, again, particularly healthcare, manufacturing, anybody in distribution, they can't work from home. They have to be in the field. So managing their their um, well-being is really important. Uh, again, security and compliance, reducing that risk. Things like ISO and GPR I mean you can't just bury your head in the sand around using things like WhatsApp. And for the for the kind of in the recent times, Microsoft have put really cost-effective licensing options in for frontline workers. And you've also got certified special devices that we can talk about more. So here's some specific examples really focused on the frontline workers. The first one I'm going to call out is walkie talkie. So this is a push to talk scenario replacing the traditional 
decked or RF type walkie talkie scenario. So uh, front of retail talking to the store, uh, the back office in terms of um, all the warehousing where the stock is or construction sites talking to each other. The brilliant thing here is this is replacing the walkie talkie scenario, but doing it over mobile data or Wi-Fi. So you can distribute the push to talk scenarios over multiple sites, multiple locations, multiple countries even. It's all data driven, so you don't have any dead spots as far as RF goes, but you can also have, say, three warehouses all talking to a retail store on push to talk uh, in, in a radio type scenario, but now over data. It is for Android phones only because they have the extensibility to run continuously in the background and you can get special headsets and even a, a specific Samsung phone called the XCover Pro. Uh, confusing name, it's not a cover, it is a phone. Um, that's the phone on the screen that has a push to talk button. So really good experience there and included in all Microsoft Teams license levels. So there's a cost center where you can potentially instantly add some value, improve the usability for users um, and improve the functionality and no special additional license. Another common scenario is shared devices. So in many scenarios you're going in, you're picking up a tablet, maybe a ruggedized tablet in some scenarios, you're not doing a, a bring your own device there, you have a dedicated workplace device. Microsoft have a shared sign in sign out scenario for Android and iOS. So you can come in, plug in your personal credentials, use the device for a day, click one button to sign out and it signs you out across all the apps in the service. So obviously on mobile you're using multiple distinct apps, but that one sign out can sign you out of all the apps. And that's really important both for, for usability and for security. So on the usability front and we see people use shared accounts, so it will say, you know, field worker one or site worker one. Uh, and if they're using something like Teams or Yammer, maybe they try and sign off in the text with their own name. Uh, but that's not very usable or very practical because how do you audit that? How do you know who really sent that? Um, how can you help people if they can't sign off with their own name? So having your own profile, being able to sign and sign out easily is really important. You can have a pin for the duration of your shift so you don't have to keep signing in and out. You can also set timers so you can have auto sign out. So uh, nurses or doctors on shifts maybe, you know they do a, typically do a eight hour, 12 hour shift. You can just have it auto sign out for them. You can also use uh, set SMS, so text messages for sign in. So we see this a lot where we have uh, a rolling workforce or shift workforce. They don't remember their passwords for all the different systems, so they can just have a text message sent to them to their mobile number and that will give them a link to sign in. And on the from the protecting the workforce and their well-being point of view, if you are doing bring your own device in particular, you can have off shift access controls where you block access to tools out of hours. Um, so certain countries have rules and regulations about you not being able to be accessed off shift so that you know employees can't extend the amount of time you're working by virtue of sending you messages before your shift or after your shift. So Microsoft Teams in particular can be set up to not receive any messages or notifications when you're outside of shifts, which can be useful from a compliance point of view. On to Power Platform, uh, arguably one of the strongest pieces of the M365 puzzle for frontline workers. So for the longest time, frontline workers have had to suffer with you know, suboptimal IT experiences because they're doing a process that wasn't the process originally five years ago, but the IT systems were built when that was the way it was done. So big old school SAP ERP type systems workflows that don't meet the modern requirements of the field worker. So with Power Platform, the field worker can become an architect of business systems and perfect frontline workers. They know what they need to do. They know the form they need to fill in. They know the fields. They can now build maybe in, in collaboration with the business or a partner or maybe just on their own build their exact workflow in terms of data collection, uh, logging in, logging out. So we can do things like upload photos, date stamps, timestamps, create an exact workflow, all centralized, everybody can see it, all compliant and secure from a data point of view, which is really important and surfaceable on mobile devices. 
So for example, might be a, a, a store audit where you walk around, you see something that's out of place or incorrect, you can take a photo of that, upload it centrally, the back office can see exactly what's going on, they can quickly give advice if needed, um, but no more of that traditional walking around with paper and pen, maybe it gets submitted to the system, maybe it doesn't, isn't properly centralised, isn't properly indexed. Uh, and this is not millions of pounds of development, this is absolutely individuals can build these flows and processes and improve the business without needing to have you know super scary development skills just the ability to drag and drop and create and of course the whole platform is very integrated so power apps can connect nicely into teams so teams can become the center of your day and you can have your apps available for those those business processes just jump forward again so that's a, just a little whistle stop tour there of, of some of the features. I wanted to call out particularly features that were knowledge worker focused. I think everybody knows the knowledge worker, but there's so much more there. Uh, and I'm going to hand over to Megan, who's going to go through some offers and views from Microsoft on what frontline workers can have and do. Perfect. Thanks, Tom. Thanks. Awesome. So, so I thought that was a great overview of frontline worker strategy. Um, obviously, it's particularly topical at the moment, given everything over the last 12 months and that critical need to have that communication channel to all parts of the business. We've seen a huge rise in teams consumption with daily active users growing 300 percent and active users on mobile has almost doubled since COVID. And with this huge rise in consumption, we understand that we need to help customers on this journey. And we've therefore invested a lot to improve not only the experience for users, but also increase that security and compliance for organisations. So I'll touch on a few recent updates in this space um, and how we can support moving forward. So firstly, just around the new F5 SKU. So on the 1st of Feb, uh, Microsoft launched new security and compliance offers for first line workers that can be purchased as an add on to the M365 F1 and F3 SKU. After, we, after we've seen a huge rise in cyber attacks, particularly against frontline staff, as these users typically have the lowest levels of security. And on top of this, like Tom touched on, the, the rise in shadow IT as employees have had to quickly pick up new ways to communicate. We've recognised this gap and challenge uh, and we want to support customers in securing their entire estate and not putting their data at risk by leaving parts of their business vulnerable. And we've therefore built all of the capability of our security and compliance solution, such as identity and access management, information protection, um, advanced threat protection into a much cheaper licence for that frontline staff. Um, some of those capabilities that you can see on the screen. So secondly, we're aligning much closer to specific industry requirements. You may have seen this in the recent announcements around our industry clouds, but we've also been developing specific frontline worker scenarios and use cases. And we're building content um, and solutions that meet your frontline needs, whether you're in retail, manufacturing, professional services. We want to ensure that we have the capability to improve the productivity and day-to-day -day tasks of your staff regardless of what that industry is. I recommend reaching out to your Microsoft account team. They can share these resources and the use cases that are specific to your industry. Thirdly is just really around Viva. Uh, so Tom touched on this as well, but Viva is just going to have a huge impact on both the knowledge and the frontline workers as we begin to tailor content to each persona within your organisation and putting well-being at the centre and bringing that learning into the natural flow of work, regardless of what that work is. So Viva Learning can provide that easy access to training content for role-based learning to quickly onboard employees, but then also constantly build their skills with instruction videos, best practice, um, even live instructions all within Teams. And then secondly, just Viva Connections. So you can deliver that single destination for shifts, news, um, tasks, discussions, and even give the frontline workers connections to resources and company information that's tailored and also personalised. I believe there's an event 
at the end of April held by Modality. So I think the link to that event will be shared afterwards. Um, but a huge, huge connection between that frontline worker and what Modality, uh, what Viva can bring um, to, to that space. And then I guess finally, just uh, what's next um, and how, how we can kind of support you moving forward and building this out. So because of, I guess, this big increase in demand for connecting the frontline staff, we've invested in creating visioning workshops and ideation sessions to help customers develop a frontline strategy and build out the scenarios that align to your business needs and challenges, whether that's improving the collaboration between frontline and the board or even frontline to frontline, um, or if you're challenged to cut costs, actually, how can we help you to digitise manual paper based processes through pa the power platform like Tom touched on before as well. We can help you all through proof of concepts, pilots um, and adoption plans to really help build out what the business case is for you. Um, so, yeah, I I'd just say reach out to your Microsoft account team, understand what offers um, and promotions are available in this space as well. So I'll now hand over to Jamie to talk around secure collaboration. Hi. Um, so um, before we uh, dig into some of the specifics around some of the security tools within the M365 platform um, for, for frontline workers, I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking around some of the uh, some of the specific considerations and and best practice for uh, that are appropriate in this space. So, um, Mark, can you forward on the slides? Um, so when we're looking at um, frontline workers in particular, um, Tom's already touched on the fact that these are the, the, the front line of your business, so that they're very often customer facing and, and this drives the necessity to have direct access to information, to be able to respond quickly um, with direct collaboration and communication tools. So there's a real challenge here around how do we do this in a, in a, in a secure way that, um, that maintains the protection that you need around your sensitive data. These frontline workers are very often also working with customer confidential data and they're working from a variety of different locations, different network types and using a, a range of different uh, devices. So data loss prevention here, device management is, is a really critical consideration, as is making sure that you're adhering to all of the regulatory compliance that you've got within your various industries, such as GDPR is, is really, really key. So when we're looking at security in the cloud, um, it, it's really important that we understand how that changes from, um, from a traditional on-premise environment. Can we advance? So there's a real difference in, in approach when, when we're moving to the cloud. Um, traditional security environments are predominantly based on on-premise environments where you've got on-premise systems stored in probably a secure data center that you manage over networks that you've got direct access over. Um, so your security products are generally based around that network perimeter. So these would be you know, uh, secure firewalls, proxy servers, intrusion detection uh, systems, all deployed at the perimeter of your network. When we're moving to a cloud centric model, obviously this changes completely because your data is already in, in, in a public uh, cloud location um, and therefore those perimeter controls are no longer appropriate. People are connecting to them from um, from home, from different locations, using a variety of different devices. And therefore we need to make sure that we're, um, that we're applying um, controls that are appropriate. So there's a number of different cap uh, ways in which we can do that. Um, the first is making sure that we're applying those controls close to that data. You know, preferably within the cloud platform itself. If we've got our security located within that cloud platform, we can make sure that we're applying that consistently, um, regardless of where different devices are connecting from or which devices people are using. So um, those, those controls will be synonymous across all of those different devices and, and connection pl uh, places. The second important thing that we need to make sure that we're getting right is consolidating our, our identity and our access management strategy. 
um, wherever possible, we should be really trying to make sure that we've got a single identity platform that we're using to authorize access to that data. Um, if individuals have got lots of different um, accounts and passwords, it's much harder. Um, it's much harder to um, to control that access and make sure that those accounts are, are secure and that they haven't been compromised. So the other and another important consideration that 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 we should factor in is this concept of having a zero trust model um, and, and a zero trust mindset. So this is the approach where you, because your data is already in that public domain, it's already being stored in, in a public cloud, we've got that mindset where we're already assuming that there is somebody out there trying to get access to that data, trying to compromise our accounts. So this is really important because it changes how we approach security. Um, rather than securing our systems, thinking that we're secure, um, it means that we're able to proactively take control of that security. We're analyzing for vulnerabilities on a continual basis, and we're also accessing um, the logs and the intelligence, and the analytics that we've got built into those platforms to continuously monitor behavior and events and look for those signs that, um, that an account's been compromised or that there's someone trying to access things that they shouldn't be. So it's a really, really important mindset change. Um, so it's also really important to make sure that we understand our data, um, not only where that data is stored, but also what type of data it is. So we need to make sure that we're classifying that data as, um, as public, internal, confidential secret, so that we understand what the data is and then can make sure that we're wrapping appropriate controls around it. If you don't know where your what data is confidential then you're not able able to properly protect that um, and lastly um, it's important that we that we've got an understanding of the devices that are accessing the environment um, in a cloud world that can be a range and, and is often a, a blend of different device types tom's already talked about mobile these can be corporate device they can also be uh, bring your own devices um, and personal devices so in these scenarios, it's really important to make sure that your endpoint management gives you the capability to manage and control that entire range of different device types and, and connection scenarios. Um, so when we're looking at specific Microsoft capabilities that, that deliver this, one of the most powerful tools uh, in, in the suite is Cloud App Security. So Tom's already touched on a little bit of that, um, that behavior for frontline workers to, to try and use any tool to get the job done. And now was a resort to public tools such as uh, Facebook, WhatsApp um, to communicate. So Cloud App Security gives you that visibility of what's happening in that space and the range of different applications that, that your workers are using. Um, it detects the use of those third party tools, those public tools. Um, and it also gives you the ability to policy that so you can gain an, an understanding of what's being used in your environment, which cloud apps users are, are using, but you can also limit and regulate that use to make sure that data is staying within your control and that people are following the right processes and procedures um, and avoid the risks that are involved in, in, in people using public tools or sharing data outside of those uh, corporate sanctioned applications. Um, so Microsoft Identity Protection and Azure AD is really um, that solution that sits in the middle and allows you to centrally manage identity and authentication. Um, so Azure AD can absolutely become your, your, your single identity platform. Um, identity Protection adds on to that capabilities such as obviously multi-factor authentication. That's, that's, that's a really critical thing that, that every organization should make sure it's in place, but also advanced capabilities such as Azure con Conditional Access, which allows you to uh, regulate where and how people are allowed to authenticate and get access to those systems and data. So it, this allows you to look at a whole bunch of different metrics uh, you can prevent access from compromised devices or you can only allow access from corporate devices. You can also track things like impossible travel events where 
perhaps an account's been used from two different geographies without enough time to travel between them. So um, there are some really advanced uh, capabilities there for, for detecting inappropriate access to access to the platform. Um, Microsoft Inf Information Protection and, and recently also as your preview, purview, sorry, are the um, other tools to to complete that data classification um, and, and allow you to to classify which of your data is of the various different internal confidential secret levels. So this gives you the capability to either manually or automatically, uh, based on the content of, of, a, of a document, um, apply a classification level to it. Once these classification levels are in place, you've then got the ability to policy how that data is accessed and what users are allowed to do with it. Uh, does, must it remain internally? Are they allowed to email it, share it externally, um, distribute it, et cetera? So this is a really, really important capability to making sure that you are managing and it are in control of your, of your corporate sensitive data. Um, Purview um, takes this one step further and allows you to extend this uh, data governance capability out to third party cloud platforms. So um, things like uh, Amazon Web Services and, and, and the Google Cloud um, and also your on premise systems. So you can have a single um, centralized capability for managing and, and governing your data across all of your different cloud providers and, and internal platforms. When we're looking at um, when we're looking at the devices themselves, the endpoints, um, Microsoft Defender for endpoint is a is a critical capability to ensuring they're secure. Um, not only does this give you um, anti malware and antivirus capabilities, um, it also has the capability to to block sophisticated threats and attacks on those devices, um, and and also give it detailed analytics on on those devices, how they're being used. Um, uh, uh, what kind of vulnerabilities they are, maybe they've not been patched, it will, it will give you all of that reporting and also some uh, behavioural monitoring capability for those devices as well. So really important for making sure that those endpoints are properly secured. Um, finally, uh, we've got Azure Sentinel, um, which is Microsoft's SIEM product. Um, so that's security event and issue management. So this is a centralised tool for your um, security uh, team it will aggregate all of the various different security logs from, from the Microsoft platform, from your devices, also from your third party uh, tools and, capable, and, and internal applications. And it gives you a centralized place where you can analyze that data, um, identify anomalies, uh, flag events, monitor that status, monitor that security, um, and proactively investigate that what's happening in your environment um, and, and hunt for, for issues and problems. It, it also has the capability to automate key security actions and events. So um, for instance, if, if um, an impossible travel event is detected, it can automatically disable those accounts for you and inform one of your security analysts that that has happened. So you've got an incredible amount of configuration there, not only to manage those security, uh, your, your platform security, but also to automate that and reduce the effort impacting your, um, your, your security team. Um, it really is becoming the central um, security management tool um, and single pane of glass for the security within, within large organizations. So definitely worth looking at. Um, so there's a lot of complexity there. There's a lot of different capability within the Microsoft stack for security, um, and that can often be um, a, a challenge for, for organizations to onboard. So at Modality, we've got a range of different services um, to, to help customers with that. Um, these range from ongoing security analytics services where we'll, where we'll provide customers with information on their environment, what's happening, and give them ongoing advice and best practice on how to maintain security and get the most out of their Microsoft security investments. Um, we'll also offer a, a fixed term uh, engagements uh, to deliver a, a baseline security, get you started and get you working in the right direction with some advice and guidance and best practice to make sure that you're starting your cloud journey from a, from a secure position. Um, 
Also, um, obviously, for larger organisations with more bespoke um, requirements, we, we can engage on a, on, a, on a bespoke per customer basis and tailor uh, our engagement to your to your specific needs. So, a um, wealth of different off, offers there and capabilities that that we can that we can bring to bear to support you in that journey. Um, but lastly, be, before I sort of wrap up, I just wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about the importance of, of governance within your environment um, as you're adopting these, these new ways of working and, and collaboration, um, especially with tools such as Microsoft Teams. We've seen a lot of organisations over the last 12 to 18 months with, with, with COVID deploy Microsoft 365 and, and these cloud services very quickly to enable their uh, remote workforce, which has been fantastically successful. Um, but then there's not necessarily put uh, a, a correct focus on how those platforms are then going to be governed and looked after and how they manage the life cycle um, once that that rollout's been complete. So this can create some real challenges for organisations, especially with tools such as Teams. Um, we've seen that organisations will struggle to get the uh, adoption that they expected, um, maybe because users default to old ways of working or they don't know how to get the most out of the platform or certain teams will will, uh, will adopt it heavily while others won't. Um, so it, it can be a real challenge there. So unless you've got decent understanding of that, it, that it, it can be hard to make sure that your users are getting the most out of these platforms and using them appropriately. Um, that inappropriate use can also lead to stagnation. So you can get into a position where multiple teams have been created, maybe by different users with varying different naming standards, all discussing similar topics. Users don't know which team to use for what conversation or data gets pushed into a team and then people move on to another project it gets left behind it's stale nobody's managing that but it's still there in the environment um, and you can also have scenarios where perhaps teams are created for for internal discussions but then three months later someone uh, needs to share some uh, information externally and they they add a third party guest to that without realizing that that gives them inappropriate access to the whole team the historical discussions and all of the internal documents as well so unless you've got a good capability to manage that and ha have a solid governance structure that you can wrap around this to make sure that these fantastically powerful collaboration tools are being used appropriately and correctly managed this can create some real risks and, and, and issues for your environment so within Modality, um, we've got a, a solution to help with this. Um, so uh, Tom mentioned earlier our teamwork analytics capability. Uh, this is an internal product that we've developed specifically around helping organisations wrap that governance, lifecycle management and analytics around the, uh, around the team story. So there's four key components for this. Um, the first one is a, is a usage and reporting piece where we provide uh, Power BI dashboards. That's the Microsoft Analytics solution all focused around giving you deep insights into how users are using the platform, um, what's working, what isn't working, where, where it's being adopted successfully and where it's not, um, empowering you to target users with, with effective communications to help make sure that they're continuing to use these tools appropriately. Um, there's also a governance capability. That governance capability gives us the, the ability to enforce uh, naming standards, policies around team creations, but also report on when those are no longer being adhered to. So we can report on uh, when external uh, guests are added to teams inappropriately, or when teams no longer have any active owners managing that data, or maybe once, um, once a team is no longer being used, it's stale, there's no activity in it. We can report on all of that to give you better management of that. Of that life cycle uh, and make sure that the platform is being used appropriately. Um, we're also uh, about to launch a, a performance capability that looks specifically at call quality across the team space. So this will give you uh, a deep dive understanding into the quality of your different uh, of your different 
calls and video calls and meetings within the environment. Um, it will show you where you're having good quality calls, where those where that quality is starting to dip and provide you with the information that you need to properly manage that and contact users and, and, and resolve those those core, core quality issues. Uh, the final piece for this uh, platform is the automation capability. So we've got all of these various different metrics and, and reporting capabilities, but we've also developed uh, our own automation engine where we can create bots um, and events that will trigger um, emails or, or chat messages to be sent to teams to, to further drive value, to remind people of the correct policy uh, or to notify uh, users that they've perhaps broken, uh, broken the guidance around how to use the product. So this really helps make sure that you're continually educating those users and educating that workforce whilst also minimizing the, the impact on your on your internal IT organizations. I, I, I hope that was helpful. Um, I'll hand back to Mark. Yes, thank you, Jamie. Very insightful. And thank you also to Megan and Tom. Uh, I hope you all found that interesting and food for thought. Um, in terms of sort of follow up activity um, and things to think about, takeaways, there, there's obviously a fast track if you have any entitlement onto that, then obviously speak to your Microsoft account manager. Um, there are also a number of Microsoft funded workshops that you may be eligible for. So, you know, we're happy to uh, investigate that for you or your Microsoft account manager would, would as well. Um, there's there's a, you know, some specifically around teams and frontline workers as well. So um, there's obviously the security uh, service and offer that uh, James just referenced, um, and we're happy to demo any of those software products that, that Jamie talked about. Um, there's also a great video um, on YouTube about frontline workers. There's a Microsoft video. Uh, I think it was from Ignite where they talk about the capabilities, but also some of the admin and, and management tools as well. So we'll distribute this deck after the webinar and uh, yeah, please feel free to watch, yeah, follow that link and watch the video. So all that remains is me to pick up any questions. So I can see there's one question that's come in, um, which is from Craig Smith. And it was, do you recommend training all staff on Teams use prior to rolling it out? And do you feel frontline workers may need more training? So who would like to answer that one? Yeah, I can jump in. I think that definitely frontline workers need more training. Fortunately, a lot of the modern experiences like Teams is, is very similar to consumer type devices. So I think the training burden has gone down. Um, but in terms of how the organization chooses to use them, what they're for, what's appropriate comms, why, where the right place to go is. I definitely think there's a lot of conversation, not so much here's how you send a message, but more here's how as an organization we're using these tools. Here's why we want to use these tools. That's super important. Yeah, and I guess there's an opportunity to work smart as well as and use things like Viva um, and, and Teams to communicate some of those sort of uh, onboarding and training messages. Definitely. I think, I think with first time workers, we all know they're, you know, push to the limits, particularly in certain verticals right now. So you, you want to be framing here's how we're trying to help you make your life better, not here's another thing to do. Like it's, it's got to show the business benefit to those individuals. Otherwise, you're just pushing more work to them. OK, thank you, Craig. And Craig, uh, sorry. Um, yeah, thank you, Craig, for your message. Thank you, Tom, for answering it. I hope, hope that answers your question, Craig. Uh, are there any more questions before we um, finish up? I think we, we had one other, actually one other message uh, came in as, was about whether we could share the Forrester report, which absolutely we will do that after the webinar. Um, the, the actual name of the report was equipping frontline workers with better tools to drive engagement. Uh, so we will circulate the details of that afterwards along with the deck. So all that remains is for me to say thank you for joining. I hope you enjoyed the webinar and please feel free to reach out to any of us. Our details are on the screen there if you would like any more information or have any questions about the subject today. So thank you everybody and hopefully speak to you again soon. Goodbye.